This is Angie from Little Dumplings Nursery, and it is a Tuesday afternoon. It's my day off from work, and um, I thought I would just show you guys real quickly how to prime a kit. I have here a Cassie Brace Evelyn kit that I'm doing as a custom painted uh, reborn for a good friend. And so since I need to prime this kit before I start painting her, I thought that I would show you guys how to prime. The first thing we're going to do is um, put a glove on. It's better when you're working with air dry paints to wear a glove on the hand that you're gonna be touching the vinyl parts with the most. That way you don't get any oils from your um, fingers and that kind of thing onto the kit that would cause the paint not to adhere well. The other thing is I've already washed my kit in hot soapy water um, and let it air dry so it's ready to prime. So the first thing you want to do when you get your kit is remove it from its packaging and wash it in very hot soapy water with Dawn dish detergent. Um, and I usually scrub mine and then leave it in the bucket of hot water for at least an hour, sometimes a couple of hours um, before I pull it back out or rinse it off just to make sure that any of the um, uh, releasing agents that are in the vinyl are really are actually come out and flood you'll be able to see when you look at the water a lot of times there'll be almost like an oily film where it starts to flood up to the top of the water so that's what you want to get off of your kit i'm using reborn fx primer um, this is a little sample bottle of reborn fx primer that i picked up at the show um, i've had several bottles of this um, and i just happen to have this little little one that would be enough to prime this kit so i thought i'd use it today I've been asked if there's other products that you can use to prime a kit. Um, another product that I have used to prime with is Fluid Matte Medium by Golden. Um, and I think that Liquitex makes one of these as well. Excuse me, I had to turn on my fan, getting hot. Um, I like the Golden Fluid Matte Medium. I use it sometimes in with the paints if I'm out of emulsion from Reborn FX. I have used it with other brands of paints and it seems to work really well uh, to to help your paints adhere to the vinyl. But one of the things it also says is um, that it can be used as a ground. So if you read the product on the back of the product, if it says useful as a translucent ground, then that means that you can use it as a primer. Um, and the fluid matte medium is um, not thick. It's more, well, I can't get the top off right now. It's kind of stuck, but anyway, um, it's, I don't know if you can hear it shaking in the bottle, but it's more fluid like, um, well, there we go. Maybe you can see that. It's like a thin glue, almost like um, Mod Podge or something like that in thickness. And um, which is very similar. I mean, the, the primers that you get from the Reborn FX company, um, same kind of stuff. So, if you were to, to have run out of primer and you needed something else in a pinch, or if you've got already have the, um, the fluid matte medium in your artist supplies, I know a lot of people have written me and say that they have been using um, artist grade paints and are mixing and matching those with their Reborn FX products, and you can do that, then that kind of product can be used as a primer as well. I've been asked, do you have to prime the vinyl? Yes and no. I have painted on vinyl before that was not primed and did fine. I have painted on vinyl before that was not primed and had problems. One of the biggest issues that you have on unprimed vinyl is that um, if the vinyl has some spots that you just didn't quite get the oil off of or that are slick and just uh, just especially around the fingers and, and, and the knuckles and things, the vinyl for some reason seems to be a little more slick. Those will be areas that you'll have difficulty getting the paint to stick to them. So if you prime them, then that takes care of that issue. The other thing is that some of the vinyls, especially the China vinyls, are actually pretty porous. And if they're really porous using air dry paints, um, and I've seen this happen with Genesis paints as well, they can soak in the color as you paint. And so it means that you have to keep adding more and more and more layers to get the look you want. Or you'll, especially with an air dry paint, you'll have your baby um, looking the way you want it to look and you'll go back a week later and look at it and it looks like some of the the coloring has faded it's not as much that it faded as it's soaking into the vinyl 
I've heard people talk about painting some of these china vinyls with uh, Genesis paints, and they'll say, I just keep applying layer after layer after layer, and every time I heat set and bring it out of the oven, it looks like I didn't put any color on it. It's because it's seeping, some of it may be seeping into the vinyl. So priming it takes care of that issue as well, so that you don't waste as much paint trying to get the look that you're wanting to go for. So I'm going to stand up now. Um, I've got, um, let me see if I move my chair over here. So I like to use the little glass candle plates a lot of times. They're cheap. You can pick them up for 99 cents at Walmart or at the dollar store. And um, I'm just going to take and shake my product. Always shake your product first before you use it. Um, you want to shake it up really good. So I've got that. And then I'm just going to squirt some out onto my glass plate. Not all that I want to use at one time. Just, you know, enough. Just a little bit. And then I have a sponge, uh, a cosmetic wedge that I have already dipped into some distilled water and then squeezed the water out. So you want that sponge to be um, damp. And I have, I use these um, under pads that you can get um, that are like for um, people that are bedridden. They're great for painting on because they absorb things. And so you can also use them just to blot your um, sponge pad off on. So then I have a paintbrush, clean paintbrush that I take. And I just paint some of this onto my sponge. Or you can dip it in the um, solution as well. But um, this gets a thinner layer on it. And then kind of look at it and I'll tell you this product is like a glue. And therefore one of the negatives is that if there's any fuzz in the air, it's going to stick to it. So I just realized that somehow, it may have been on my paintbrush, I got a piece of fuzz on there. So I'm going to take that off with my toothpick. And while you're painting and while your pieces are, or while you're priming and while your pieces are drying, um, keep an eye out for little fuzzies that may stick to them and always keep a little pair of tweezers on hand. This is just one of the little issues that with air dry painting you have to watch out for um, because, especially with Reborn FX paints, because they do have wonderful binders in them that make them stick really well. Um, these binders um, are like a little bit bit like glue in that they're not glue but they're a little bit like glue in that they do attract dust so um, until they're dry so that's just another thing that you want to be on the lookout for but anyway I'm pouncing this on my baby and you just want a light covering and then I'm going to take my brush in areas like um, the ears where there's lots of creases and whatnot I'm just going to pounce that all in there with the brush and then I'll go back over it with my wedge As you see, I am working rather quickly here. Go down the neck, around the creases, around the eye creases, the nostrils, around the lips, inside the mouth. So I've got some applied in all those areas, and then I'm just going to pounce over what I just applied. And this dries pretty quickly. To the touch it will be dry pretty quickly. Baby looks kind of wet right now. I'm just going to go ahead and blot it in once it's on my plate because the back of the head's pretty smooth. I don't have any um, wrinkles that I'm much to fill in. Maybe right there at the nape of the neck. And when you're working with air dry products, you do want to work quickly. Um, you want to work and get them on your surface before they start to get tacky because once they start to get tacky, um, then they don't pounce as smoothly. So here we go. Evelyn's got a big head. Um, I was really surprised when I got this kit in the mail, just how big she is. I wasn't quite expecting her to be such a big baby. Uh, I think she's going to be reborn up into a beautiful baby. Now, when this is air dried, the uh, Reborn FX primer and some of the other products that you may use as a primer, it may have uh, a little bit of a tacky feel to it. But that d gets better as you paint over it. And then also... Um, you can at any point 
after you've added a layer or two of paint, you can add a layer of the Reborn FX matting fluid. And what that does is mats down any sheen that you may have gotten while you're painting, and it helps to remove any tacky feel that you may have gotten along the way from the, from the um, products that you're using and the extra binders that are in them. So I think I've got that covered pretty good there. And then once you get it um, on the head, starting with the head, I go back with my brush and make sure there's none pooling in the creases like the mouth. This baby's got a little bit of an open mouth, so I've got to be careful about that. The nostrils, I just go back over the um, areas like that and the nose and the ears. Make sure there's nothing pooling. Alrighty, that looks pretty good. So there's my head. You can see that it's wet. And then at this point, you're just going to set your head up to dry. I've got this neat um, holder here that was, um, it's actually a wine glass holder made to put wine glasses on when they're drying after you wash them and it will hold several, it will hold up to three kits because there's enough prongs on each layer for a head and, and the limbs so I'm going to situate that right there and then look at it in like when you look at your kit in different lighting you may see an area you know as it starts to dry if you see an area that you missed which I see a little area right there on the back of the head that needs a little bit more I'm just going to pounce that right there. That's got that. All right, so I'm going to show you on her arm doing a limb because you've got lots of fing the fingers and lots of creases from the fingers and whatnot. So I'm going to squirt out some more of my primer. I'm going to get just a little bit on my brush to start with. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this literally like painting in between the fingers and all the creases. I don't know if you can see that. Let me turn this way, maybe you can see it better. There you go. So see how I'm running it through all the all the um, little creases in the hand, spaces between the fingers. And get that on there really well. I'm gonna put a little bit on the creasing in the wrist. Got some there. And then there's a crease on the inner um, arm. So I'm going to get some there. And one thing that might help you when you're working with these limbs, and I forgot to mention this, is if you get like a long paint brush, any, old, any older brush will do, and stick it up in there, then you can kind of hold your flange and the brush in your arm like that, and it, uh, in your hand, like you're holding the brush and just your fingers on the flange, and that gives you more freedom, these gloves are a little big on me, more freedom to um, get up around the edges of the baby's arm. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and paint around the shoulder right at the edge there to make sure I've got that. So now that I've got some on there, I'm gonna take my sponge and I'm gonna start back where I, where I was at the beginning and I'm gonna pounce it all in the reason you want to pounce over even what you painted with the paintbrush is just to give it that smooth matted look, look so it doesn't have any brush streaks in it. And I'm just going to spread my product out around the plate here, paint some on the sponge. Once again, working very quickly. And I see a little speck of fuzz. It got stuck to my kit, or to my arm. The 
arm of my chest. I'll get it out, out in a minute. I've got several sizes of tweezers here, so let's turn it till you see it, and I'll just pull that little speck of fuzz out. So you do have to keep up. You have to keep an eye out for that. I'm almost done with this arm now. And it doesn't matter whether you're using the um, Reborn FX primer or another company's primer. I think uh, a couple of the other air dry Reborn doll paint companies have primers, or at least I know uh, one of them does. Um, regardless, this would be the way you, you would um, apply it, regardless of the brand you're using. So now I've got that on pretty well. You can see my baby's hand and arm is wet it's shiny from the wet and it will have just a little bit of sheen after this dries as well um once again i think i've mentioned this several times already um let's see some on the top of the hand i want to add um i mentioned this before and that is that these products the binders in these products do leave a little sheen um and that is something that you you will work with as you go um using the matting fluids as you go that reborn fx has come out with will help with the sheen uh, and to control it as you paint. They also have a new product called Shine Remover, which is an extra matte version of um, matting fluid. It's thicker and more matte, and it is uh, due to be up on the website uh, any day now, and I've actually gotten the privilege of testing that product, and it is wonderful, absolutely wonderful, so I highly recommend everybody getting that product. So now I'm gonna put this little arm over here to dry. And I won't bore you with showing you the rest of the limbs being primed because it's the same process. Um, but as you see, it moves very quickly. And that's all there is to prime in a kit. Um, with Reborn FX Primer, they recommend that you let it dry a minimum of 30 minutes, especially if you're using Open Time, um, which is their product that increases the drying or decreases the drying time of your paints or increases, I'll get the word out right, so that you have more working time with your paints. Um, or um, if you use another brand or another brand's retarder, the same thing. Um, you want to make sure that this primer is really dry, the same with if you're using a different brand of primer before you start using those products. So the recommendation is a minimum of 30 minutes. More is better. I personally believe that it's better to prime the day before you start painting and have your primer um, set for 24 hours. That's not to say that you can't go ahead and paint within 30 minutes to an hour after you prime. I have had, I have done that in a pinch and I didn't have run into any problems, but I just feel better if I can let it sit longer. So that's just my preference. So thanks for joining me in this video and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.